And we're back. Are you ready for math? Let's go. Here we go. We will be able to understand the meaning of multiplication. All right, cuties. So here we are. Understand the meaning of multiplication. Think it through. What is going on when you multiply numbers? That's our big question today. What's going on when we multiply numbers? So let's take a look. It says, when you multiply, you work with equal groups. These groups of shells are equal. How many shells are in each group? Are there the same amount of shells in each group? Hmm, let's look at the next section. It says these groups of shells are not equal. How come? Can you tell me why they're not equal? What does equal mean? And how come the second group is not equal? Tell me why. Think. Multiplication is a way to find how many in all. When you have equal groups of objects, you can multiply to find a total. Multiply is a bold word, so it must be what? Important. Groups are called equal groups when they all have the same number of objects. So let's take a look at these shells. There are three groups because there are three circles and there are two shells in each group. So that means that we can write this as three times two. Think of three times two as three groups of two. Three groups of two shells is six shells in all. So three times two equals six. Think. You can use pictures and models to understand multiplication. A picture can help you see what multiplication means. So let's take a look at this picture. We have three groups. Do you see the three groups? We have a yellow group, an orange group, and a green group. Each of these groups has four balls. So the total is how many in all? Three groups of four balls is how many in all? Can you tell me? One factor tells us how many groups we have. So we have three groups. See the arrow pointing to the three? The X means groups of. So we have three groups of. And then the other factor tells how many are in each group. Then we have our equal sign and the product is the result. It tells how many in all. So we have a factor times a factor equals our product. When we multiply two numbers, each number is called a factor, and the answer of a multiplication problem is called the product. So it says when you see 3 times 4 equals 12, you can say 3 times 4 equals 12. It's kind of hard to say it differently when you're reading out it out loud, right? Um, you can arrange the equal groups into rows and stack them on top of each other. This is called an what? We talked a lot about these this year. What is this called? What is this figure called? When we have rows and columns. So that's how they arranged the balls now. There are three rows with four balls in each row. 
and the total is still the same. The product is still the same. 12 balls in all. Okay, the last thing we're going to go over is your assignment for today. So we are going to use this page as your assignment today. You are going to use the picture of the fish and you are going to answer those one, two, three, four, five, six questions, okay? Um, I'd like you to answer those questions on our Google Classroom. So just as you did for language arts, you're going to do the same thing for math. It will be in the math section for your assignments today in the classwork tab on Google Classroom. You will have a separate sheet of paper at your house and you will number the questions and you will answer the questions on your paper. Don't forget to date your paper. Now that we're done with our lesson, let's go over our we will. We will be able to understand the meaning of multiplication. Okie dokie, so we just finished our lesson on multiplying numbers. And what does that really mean? We will continue with this lesson and we will learn some more and review some more about multiplication. For now, I'd like you to go to your Google Classroom, head on over there and go to your classwork tab and go to the math section and find the lesson for today, the assignment for today, April 20th. And I'd like you to complete that using a piece of paper at your house and putting the date on that paper so that you don't get confused with your schoolwork. And then um, when you're all finished answering those six questions, I'd like you to spend 10 to 15 minutes on iReady, doing iReady lessons. Okie dokie. Um, you can spend more time if you'd like to on iReady. That's always an option, but I'd like you to spend at least 10 to 15 minutes on iReady once you have watched our YouTube video, done your activity on Google Classroom. Then I'd like you to spend 10 to 15 minutes on iReady lessons. Okay, see you soon.